says that size matters. In 2011, when it comes to pets, there's a growing group of people who believe that small is beautiful. Everyone loves a baby, and a miniature animal looks like a baby flogger. <laughs> Good baby. We love him, absolutely love him. Over the next hour, we'll find out how the face of the animal world is being changed by ever smaller breeds. We'll see how some super tiny animals are being specially bred for minimum size. It's a peek-a-poo. Oh, and we need to get brushed. <laughs> Rule of thumb, the smaller they are, the higher the price. It's not just the story of the pocket pets, but of their owners too. Every time I see her, she'll be like, I'll still beat you. And an animal world where almost anything is possible. In this programme, we meet everything from mini mews and micro pigs to teacup dogs and miniature monkeys. Lots of different animals with one thing in common. They all came with an inbuilt awe oh, factor. If it fits in my hand, I'm in heaven. Welcome to the world of super tiny animals. Today, Britain has more micro pets than ever and has become a country where many think smaller, rather than bigger, is better. <laughs> but there's nothing new about having animals as accessories. As far back as the 8th century, small pets like Pekingese sleeve dogs were popular with Oriental nobility, who carried them around in their gowns. But it's the 21st century that has seen the popularity of pocket-sized pets soar. From Bruiser the Chihuahua in the hit film Legally Blonde, to Paris Hilton and her tiny pet Tinkerbell. Suddenly, it seemed everybody wanted a handbag companion. Over the last five years, the number of Chihuahuas registered with the Kennel Club has increased by 350%. Hardly surprising that a mini industry has popped up to deal with this mini phenomenon. And we meet a man who's not only devoted his life to caring for rare and exotic animals. You look like a girl. Oh, you got big choppers, though. He's dedicated his home to it, too. Like two little gremlins. We'll find out how his tiniest animals are in big demand. It's fair to say that in 2011, miniature pets are very much of the moment. Today, few people are surprised at seeing a dog in a handbag, but there are still some small animals that make us do a double take. Exotics are animals not normally classed as domestic pets, but increasingly, many are becoming so, not least because some of them have become YouTube sensations, such as Sonia the ticklish slow Loris. And over in Florida, we find one man who has devoted his life to these unusual creatures. You're a good girl. Oh, you got big choppers, though, in case you did bother anybody. Michael Podge's job is in real estate, but his passion ever since childhood has been rare and unusual animals. His smart suburban villa is now home to his own personal exotic zoo. Hi, cutie. Come here, sweetheart. Michael breeds and sells most of his rare animals. Say hello. Hello. Good boy. They're worth about $800. It's a raven. It's like a blackbird on steroids, right? But his most popular by far are the tiny marmosets. What we're looking at here is a, a mother with one baby. They keep their babies usually underneath them, and they nurse, or they keep them on the back if it's too hot out. This particular monkey is the second smallest monkey in the United States. And these come from Brazil. But um, the one that is even smaller is so rare that it's almost un unobtainable. Pygmies are the smallest, and those are the ones that are very rare and very delicate and they're too expensive to own. So these are the most common, and these are affordable for people to have them as a pet. They make great pets. It's thought the marmoset takes its name from a French word meaning grotesque image, but that hasn't stopped it becoming one of the most sought-after exotic pets in America today. Women consistently ask, can I put a diaper on them? Can I hold them? Can I rock them to sleep at night? Women ask that. Men don't ask that. I mean, you name it. The people ask some of the strangest questions, and it cracks me up. Selling at around $2,500 each, these little monkeys are big business, and there's no shortage of takers. We're getting about 10 calls a day asking questions, and it turns into about three or four monkeys a month. But before anyone hits the monkey trail, there are laws and permits, both in the UK and abroad, restricting ownership of some exotics. And having one as a pet certainly isn't for everyone. Most people will never come in contact with this type of animal in their whole life. So even though that they're obtainable, doesn't mean that people know where to get them or how to find them or even know what to do. Because some people realize that it's too much work for them or more responsibility than they really want to take on. But others realize that it's not 
not that difficult for them and they don't mind. I mean, I think most people get satisfaction of nurturing, right? They sure love you back, that's for sure. <laughs>